Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi, and we welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them, and today we got a hell of a show for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to hit all notifications to be notified the second uh, we publish our content. Let me just go ahead and get into this topic here. Now, as you guys know, uh, Kobe Bryant is my favorite player of all time, right? I don't, I don't, I, I've always said that Kobe is the be- is. Kobe is the best player I've seen play basketball live. Like I caught Jordan uh, during his wizard years, but in terms of Kobe, I saw Kobe. And I'm and, and as I was watching Kobe, I said to myself, there, "There's nobody better than this guy. There's nobody." And the fact of the matter is, that's exactly what everybody else was saying. Everybody: D. Wade, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James. They all said they've never seen anybody be able to do the things that Kobe Bryant can do on a basketball. All of them said that, right? So even they agree with me. Kobe Bryant was a bad boy. And if you look at Kobe's game, he had no weaknesses. He had no weaknesses. But one of the things that Kobe had, which I believe made him an exceptional score, was his post game. Kobe was the guy that all of these dudes copied. Kobe one summer decided that he's like, you know what? I'm already the best in the world, but I want to take my game to another level. So what did Kobe do? Kobe decided to spend a summer working with Hakeem Olajuwon. Right. And funny enough, a lot of players then started to follow suit. Carmelo Anthony did. Uh, uh, Dwight Howard did. LeBron James did. I think a few others did. But the only person that was actually able to pick up the moves are Kobe. That should tell you a lot about Kobe and his basketball IQ. Out of all of those guys that went and trained with him, he's the only one that was actually able to pick up, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Hakeem's footwork. The only one. So when Kobe went uh, and worked with him and came back, you could see that his footwork was the best in the NBA. And at one point, I remember Tim Legler saying, not only is Kobe Bryant the best player in the NBA, he's even the best post player in the NBA. He was talking about a six foot six guard being the best post player with players like Tim Duncan, uh, uh, Kevin Garnett, and all of these guys playing it, Rasheed Wallace, and all of these guys playing in the NBA. He said that about Kobe. So what happened? I was going through the internet and I came across an audio from Tony Allen, who was a former Memphis Grizzly, former Boston Celtic who was considered one of the best defenders, perimeter defenders in the NBA and probably of all time. And is the guy that Kobe said gave him the most difficulty in terms of scoring against because of how good he was as a defender. So as I was listening to him, he was on his podcast, I think the DraftKings podcast, and he was talking about, you know, what it's like to guard various players. And then he started describing what it was like to guard LeBron James and then to guard Kobe Bryant. As he was talking about Kobe, who, who mirrored his game after Michael Jordan, you could just quickly begin to see how Kobe and Jordan were just far more superior uh, offensive players. And that's really what we want to focus in on today. But before we even get into that, this video is brought to you by our brand new sponsor, Price Picks, which is the largest daily fan- fantasy sports platform in North America. Price Picks is really simple. Instead of just selecting a team, you just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats, and then you place your entry. For example, this week, I'm selecting two entries. Stephen Curry for more than 25 points. And then I got Anthony Davis for more than two blocks and Damian Lillard for more for more than four three-pointers made. Price Picks is also the only daily sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So for example, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and doesn't return to the second half, that player gets automatically rebooted. What I also love about Price Picks is that it offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesdays. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit matchup up to $100. That's go to pricepick.com slash CLNS, use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. And once again, once you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Tony Allen had to say, and I'm going to come back uh, and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to this here. What was the Cleveland LeBron scouting report? Well, at the time, I must say his game wasn't as advanced as it is now. Uh, I really wasn't worried about him posting me because he didn't have a post game at the time. And the scouting report was basically go up under all the pick and rolls. He's going to get about 40 to 50 pick and rolls a game. So be ready to fight up under it. If he's in transition and he's in the pick and roll, fight over the top. And, you know, you're going to have your help because we, was we wasn't we was sagging on him. We was we was like corralling on what they call that uh show we was, mm-hmm. we was we was um we was like soft mm-hmm. show maybe 
And um, and if he if he shoot the jump shot, we living with that. You can't do that now, though. I can't say we can't do that now. <laughs> He's also not moving quite as fast. True. Or no, he high. picking his spots. He picking his spots. Last but not least, Kobe Bryant. He said that oh, he also man. named you as his toughest matchup. Everyone knows, but he said he never heard you ask for help, which probably is where most people are probably <laughs> asking for help when they're on an island with Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you hear it so much. So it, it'd be like times where, you know, guys get put in the post. And, you know, Kobe was a great post player. A lot of people don't even really know that. His footwork out of the post is down there like Elijah mm-hmm. Wan. You know what I mean? I mean, he could catch it, spin, go baseline, Catch it, spin, spin, then spin the opposite way, come back. He has so many counter moves. Ridiculous. And if he's if he smelled any blood, the first thing he would do is he, he'll pound your chest in, like with his shoulder. Throw his elbow, pound your chest in, throw it with his like his whole body just and try to get the get mm-hmm. to the fadeaway where you can't even contest. And my whole thing was I was like, yo, I lift too many damn weights for him to be throwing his mm. shoulder in my chest and me calling for help. Like, I don't need no help. I got this. My team depending on me for this. And like I said, back to confidence, back to not getting discouraged. I wanted to be the one that people say, you know what, T.A., man, you you did a good job on Kobe. And after each game, after each game, after each game, after each game, it, 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 it put fuel to my fire to go out there and compete. And I was like, yo, I, I'm, I'm going to get my rest. And I think I think I got mm-hmm. it. I, I think I got mm-hmm. him tonight. But it would always be that head fake, head fake, and you fall for the head fake. And then I'm you like, got the no, triple God, head fake, God. though. That's not, it's not fair. <laughs> quadruple. quadruple. It, it, it might be a quadruple head fake. He got it out near the three-point line. <laughs> it's like, come on, bro. And you know yeah. it's coming. You know yeah. it's coming. And But like I say, I would never get discouraged. Mm-hmm. If he hit five, six, seven in the room, I'm giving him that same energy. I'm bo- and then it's like, damn, like when he's trying to box out, when you're boxing out, he's throwing his elbow in your neck. He, so I got to meet that same intensity. And I wanted to be always the one riding for my team. Like, I'm not scared of him, man. And I done seen some guys look at that man and just say, you know, here you go, go on to the rim. I didn't want to be that guy. But uh, if I can put words in, in the one uh, one one sentence, I say, uh, unstoppable, man. <laughs> unstoppable. You can't – look, you can't – You look. It, it, I'm talking early in – you you couldn't go under the nope. pick and roll. He had a post game. Most definitely. And it was one time he, he was averaging down there 38, 40 points you a game in one month. You talking about Swole, Kobe, when he was like 240? Swole. What about Swole being yeah. when he was running around and you couldn't get physical with him or do nothing? Ex- Come on, man. Yeah. All that, man. I'm, and, and I'm get, I don't know if y'all know this. You know, let me give you some quick trivia. You know, Kobe Bryant fouled me out in eight minutes. Six fouls in eight minutes. What did he get you that. with the hair fake? So I was, <laughs> man, I was just nervous, man. Yeah. I was just like, damn, I'm actually running up against this yeah. dude. And from that point on, I always look back at that. And I was like, yo, that'll never happen to me again. You Six get what fouls in eight minutes? Man, that's crazy. <laughs> he had you in the chamber, T.A. That was your first matchup against them. Yeah. So it was like, so it was like, yeah, are you, you mm-hmm. just looked it up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was nervous. I was nervous. So you heard what Tony Allen had to say. Listen, anybody that saw these guys play basketball or seen highlights of them or game footage of them knows that what he's saying is the absolute truth. Jordan and Kobe, in my personal opinion, are two of the greatest scorers the NBA has ever seen. If I had to give you the five greatest scorers just off the top of my head, uh, and I am saying that there are more, obviously you have Jerry West, you have Alex English, you have uh, Kobe Bryant, you have Michael Jordan, of course you have Kevin Durant, of course you have Allen Iverson uh, and others. Um, But Kobe and Jordan were, 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 I believe, were the two best scorers Uh, wing scores in terms of guards uh, the game of basketball has ever seen. Kobe Bryant averaged 35 and a half points per game during the slowest era in terms of pace in NBA history when teams were averaging around 99 points per game. Kobe was averaging 35 and a half points per game. At one point, Kobe Bryant averaged 40 points a game for an entire month. For an entire month, Kobe Bryant averaged 30, uh, 40 points per game. And then on top of that, 
Kobe was a guy that actually outscored an entire NBA team by himself in three quarters. Kobe Bryant in one game plate had 63 points. And the Dallas Ma and the Dallas Mavericks had about 62 points. Kobe by himself has outscored an entire NBA team in three quarters. So Kobe Bryant was an exceptional scorer, but so was Jordan. But the question is why? The reason it was the reason these guys were exceptional scorers is because of their offensive package. Let me put it into context for you guys. Kobe and Jordan had everything in their game. They had the most unstoppable shot. There are two of them is the sky hook and the pull up jump shot. They had it in their arsenal. They had the fade away. They can fade with both going on uh, um, uh, from both shoulders. They had a post game. They had the long game. They could hit free throws. They were totally unguardable. And when they got hot, it was a wrap. I've seen Kobe have multiple, multiple times score 30 points in a quarter in the playoffs. Like Kobe Bryant was on a totally different level, and so was Jordan. And to, to some people would say, well, LeBron has the most career point. That doesn't matter. It's just a longevity number. And he has a higher average because he averages 27 and Kobe averages 25. Those numbers are also skewed. Kobe's career average is around 28, 29. If you factor in the first year, he didn't really play basketball. And you factor in the years he tore his Achilles tendon. Kobe was about a 28 point per game score for his career. That's really what he was. Minus his, the first year when he didn't really play basketball. And then the last years when he got injured. That's exactly what he was. Kobe was scoring 28 points a game playing with Shaq as his teammate. Playing with Shaq. If you don't believe me, let me give you guys some further context why Kobe and Jordan we're in a totally different stratosphere than anybody we're watching play basketball today in terms of scores and some of the people he mentioned. Kobe Bryant has more 40-point games than LeBron James and Stephen Curry combined. Are you aware of this? And Jordan has more 40-point games than Kobe. Jordan, I believe, has about 170-something 40-point games and Kobe's about 140-something. LeBron has one 60-point game. Kobe scored 50 for four straight games, 50-plus like 65, 80, 50 something. He's on a totally different stratosphere. So what I think what Tony Allen was saying was the God's honest truth. Kobe and Jordan want a totally different stratosphere. If you feel any type of way, that's your business, but these are just the facts. So what I want to know from you guys, what do you think about what he had to say? What do you think about our analysis? Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show. Peace.